I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Two thousand nineteen Honda Pilot Touring All Wheel Drive. So it's pretty much the Odyssey for people who don't want minivans, and it still has VTEC. Send it, Yuri. One more VTEC. The best part is you can actually hear the VTEC crossover in this. Okay, let me put it back to drive and economy because... Drive this like a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> so not new for this year is the engine, 3.5 liter V6. Horsepower and torque. 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Definitely not slow. But the transmission has been retuned, so now we have a 9-speed, which we also had, but slightly better. But you can get like a 6-speed auto, right? Uh, you can actually get a CVT. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what else is new with this SUV? Well, let's start with the outside. We have all new bumpers and slightly different headlights and grills. We've got the nice daytime running lights. We have a chrome front end. I'm not a big fan, but the DRLs look really cool with the chrome. Get the black edition. Exactly. It blacks everything out. Now that is a Canada exclusive. Oh, really? Yeah. Now yeah. what about that back end? We've got the traditional Honda lobster claws. Traditional new, because they are newer. And then we have slightly different chained bumpers. I think overall, it looks pretty good. It looks exactly like a pilot from 2018, 2019 would look like. Well, 2019, because it's newer than an 18. If you look at this and a ridgeline side by side from the front, you couldn't tell them apart almost. Quick shot of the interior. We should also mention straight up front that it is a three row car. Yes, and we have the eight passenger edition. You can also get a seven passenger with captain's chairs right behind us. Also new for this year, a kick to open trunk. And it works really well to open and close. It does, however, I find that it goes up very slowly. Box test. 18. I think it might need a little bit of motivation. Go to patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Counts. So what else is new with this one? Let's start with your favorite thing. The infotainment has been updated. Okay, do you want me to get into it? Yeah, go for it. We've got a volume knob. We actually have a volume knob, but no tuning knob. No tuning knob. So we have like channel left and right, which is awful. And it's the infotainment is pretty much from the Odyssey. Yeah, so that's good. It's not like the Civic or the NSX. And it's not like the Accord, which is our favorite. It is like the Accord, but without a tuning knob and we don't have hard buttons on the side. Exactly, which is the best part of the Accord infotainment. So here's my gripe with this. You can't find the buttons without looking extra hard. If I was driving, look, my eyes are on the road right now. I hit the volume knob. I've got that, no problem. If I'm in satellite radio and I want to change my station, I need to look down to find that and hope that I actually click it. So we're gonna compare the video of my eyes looking at the volume knob and looking at that channel knob to show how distracting it is. Oh, I agree, it needs a tuning knob. And it needs buttons on the side. Look, if I wanna get out of Apple CarPlay, I need to click home, and then I need to click Sears Satellite Radio to get into Sears Satellite Radio. And say I wanna get back into CarPlay, I can't just click this phone button up here, which I still have to look to. I need to click home, then click CarPlay, and then if I wanna to go to Google Maps, I need to click Google Maps. Oh, I know. Too many buttons. Kia, Hyundai, Genesis, they get it right with their favorited button and hard buttons on the side. I think Accord had it right. Guys. But it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Fantastic. And then my next constructive criticism for it is they should just put a volume knob here, tuning knob here, and your favorites right there. Yeah, I agree. Like how perfect would that be? I know, just hard a couple buttons more buttons. On the side. Next thing, rewind satellite radio stations. We have 12 rewinding satellite radio stations, but this is the first car I've driven with tune mix. So the way it works, we can hold down and add channels up to five of them right now we have six nine ten and 25 when i click that it'll go through stored favorites and randomly play songs from all of those channels that are already stored that sounds pretty cool so when you click on that tune mix button you can go forward or back if you've been listening to the stations for a while but i have noticed that if you get out of it and go back then it doesn't let you go back and forward anymore so i think there's some bugs with the system serious satellite radio guys call me i'll fix it call you, him not you me. have my email don't call me and for all those other people who say they don't like serious satellite radio because they keep calling you after your trial expires. Pro tip, tell them you crashed your car and then they never call you again. That's what I did. That's a pretty good tip. So they do want you to call me. What's next? Not the infotainment. Let's talk about infotainment. Cabin talk. <laughs> okay, we had that in the Odyssey. Yes, we did. We don't have a camera setting to look who's in the back, but we do have this cool little mirror here. So let's explain cabin talk. So you press the button and you can talk to your children in the back. Even if they have headsets on. Exactly. So speaking of headsets in the back, we do have a screen right here. It does have Are We There Yet? So if you put your destination in the map, It'll let the kids know how long till we're there. But you have to use the built-in navigation, which nobody's ever gonna use because there's Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. But what I noticed that they added is there's actually preloaded children's TV shows and movies, which is amazing. 
and you have to watch ads to watch it for free or you can subscription so there's no ads. Yeah, exactly, which is pretty hilarious. So there's actually ads in this car. This is what I think the 7 Series needed in the back of their infotainments. Yeah, every car needs preloaded movies and TV shows. Or streamable movies and TV shows. Anything that has a rear entertainment system needs to have something preloaded. No one's ever gonna use Miracast. I'm sorry, nobody uses Miracast in the history of the planet. Blu-rays are all right though. Yeah, that's great. But in the back, you don't have RCA to plug into that TV. But you have HDMI. Yeah, but what does N64 run on? Doesn't matter. RCA, what do you want to play with four people in the back seats? Nintendo 64. You, not the children of what this is, age. Were you gonna hook up a PlayStation and play Call of Duty online? Why wouldn't you? Because you can't play four players doesn't matter. Now let's talk about things that I appreciate with my new Pixel 3 wireless charging. I don't have that with my old Apple phone yet. Moving on to the gauges. Pretty much exactly the same as the Odyssey. We can hide our tack, but the tack is very nice. We do have a bottom screen with more information and the best part is there's a blank option. Yeah, there's actually apps. The thing I want from every single other manufacturer, I can scroll down and just click Blank. I just want the all-wheel drive torque one because that's pretty cool. And then into drive modes, I guess, because that's all connected there. We've got this econ button here that you click, which adds a leaf to the gauges and it softens your throttle input with your foot. So yes. if you're in sport mode or drive mode, it'll make it a little softer. And then we can click down to go into sport mode and use your paddles. The paddles are pretty cool and some more drivetrain related stuff. We do have auto start stop and it's smooth as butter. Yeah, it's actually been smoothed out. Then we also have off-road drive modes. Have you messed with those things yet? No, but I'll do that when I drive. Yeah, we got cool graphics. I don't really plan on taking this off-roading. I'm not sure how many people will. Yeah, I'm not actually gonna do it when I drive because we're not gonna do any of that stuff. And then to finish off the rest of the interior with the infotainments and gauges, we have hard buttons for all your climate, which is perfect. I agree, it's not buried in the infotainment. Thank you, Honda. So now I'll let you jump into this beautiful, comfortable captain seat with armrests that make my elbows touch the steering wheel while driving. I am the captain now. <laughs> I think it's this. <laughs> <laughs> I am the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's actually drive this thing. VTEC, love that VTEC crossover. Paddles shift pretty quick. I like the transmission. As we said, it's very smooth. How does it handle, like a sports car? Handles like a friggin pilot perfect so in terms of handling the suspension is so soft i really like it i have no issues with that you're not going to send it but i'm going to send it into cliche anyways steering's nice and light which is exactly what you want in an suv and it is all-wheel drive so you're not gonna have to worry about winter which we are in unfortunately yeah winter filming sucks yep it does suck we need the suffer in the winter subscription break yeah exactly we suffer for you guys so just subscribe please all right, downshift and send into cliche corner. And this thing's very nice to drive. Obviously there's some body roll, but it doesn't really matter. It's super comfortable, that's the most important part. It doesn't feel sporty, doesn't need to. I think this does drive better than the Volkswagen Atlas. Oh, for sure. So that's the biggest comparison that we've driven for something of this size. But does it drive better than the Odyssey? I don't know if it does. <laughs> we really sent that yeah. Odyssey. <laughs> I think it's more fun to go fast in an Odyssey. Yeah, it's just funnier because you're in a minivan. As Yuri said earlier, we do have drive and sport. Sport is pretty touchy. I'd probably just leave this thing in drive. But I mean, if you do sport and econ. I guess, but oh, it's there's like, no point. There's no point. There's that's, no point in doing econ plus sport. That's why I like to take the gauges and just get rid of the tack in general. It looks cooler to me. And other stuff people would probably be very interested in, this does have Honda sensing and it works very well. The cool thing about the lane keep assist is you can have it on without having to have cruise control on. Exactly. And this does have adaptive cruise. So this thing is a joy to drive on the highway. Unless it gets slow because it doesn't go down to a certain speed, which is a total bummer. Yeah, that really sucks. I wish it had stop and go. And then it's also not as good as other cruise controls on the highway. And the way I measured that is I went straight. I had my hand there and the wheel was just kind of doing this. It wouldn't stay perfectly centered in the lane. Uh, you mean lane keep assist? What did I say? Adaptive cruise control. I meant adaptive lane keep assist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that test one of these days. We will. One of these days we will have an adaptive slash everything slash autonomy test, which isn't full autonomy. The blind spot monitoring in this compared to other vehicles, I think is so much better because it shows up inside right here instead of on the mirror. That is it makes nice. it so much easier to see. Slightly less confusing than most cars. So let's bring it back to one thing I mentioned earlier. Adjust the volume knob while driving. Don't look at the thing. Got it. Okay. Now adjust the channel while driving. Oh God. Yeah, it's... it's okay. Now I'm going to overlay that eye comparison so you can see Honda. This is for Honda. How distracting touch buttons are. Hard buttons. I can't wait till we review your Tesla. This is science. Tesla Model 3. Yeah. I'm gonna be in a ditch upside down when I'm <laughs> driving that thing. Now let's talk about reverse cameras. Which one? 
Well, we have a reverse camera. Exactly. We don't have a 360 camera. No, we don't. The Atlas did, but then it was tricky to get into it because we had to do that button click thing. Yeah, it didn't default to it. We haven't driven a Santa Fe yet, but I'm going to assume from everything I know from Hyundai's, Kia's, and Genesis's that it's going to have a 360 camera, a reverse camera similar to the Stinger, and it's going to work perfectly. So points lost on that for this one. Hypothetical points, Hypo but I do agree. Yeah, hypothetical <laughs> points are still points. Gloss black in so many damn places. I absolutely can't stand it. Yuri's already spilled coffee all over it. Like, it's not my fault Tim Hortons overfills their coffees. Like, they fill it so high sometimes that, like, how are you supposed to even leave the store without, like, a, a gyroscopic oh, gimbal stabilizer? Oh, I know how to that. Go to McDonald's for your coffee. Let's do the cup holder test, though. <laughs> okay, okay. So we've got a medium that fits perfectly fine, and then we've got a small that's right on the edge. And I, what did we do? I put it to a vote on our Instagram, Yuri Tertian, the straight pipes and you guys voted like 56% in favor of a pass. You guys are wrong. You're wrong. FYI. And let's let them know why they're wrong. Because when I tried to lift it up, I got to grab my fingers around the edge, which is unacceptable. And if I don't do that, the lid started opening up with a full cup today. Brutal. And I guess the next thing we need to do is a visor test. Yeah, okay. He's Three. Impressive. Odyssey didn't pass. Three, two, one. Oh my oh! goodness. <laughs> So Odyssey didn't pass because it touched all the way to the end, which is a not pass pass. This is a full pass. This is a full pass. Good job, Honda. Now back to down here. I love this pattern on the center console area that you can hide. It's amazing. Since I am the captain now, these seats are so comfortable. Like ultimate road trip seats. For some reason, I think the Odyssey was better. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm pretty sure it's the same. Yeah, but these are so comfortable. I just love this captain aspect, oh. which the Odyssey also had, the ratcheting seats. Honestly, they can add this to like an M5. I know, like, yeah. I wouldn't be upset. Mazda yeah. Miata, whatever. It's the best. <laughs> uh, we do have heated and cooled seats, which is great. And we do have a heated steering wheel, but the thing is the heated steering wheel won't turn on every time you turn on your car but the heated seats will. But at least it's a nice button over here, which is surrounded by gloss black, unfortunately, but at least we do have a button. And then the most underappreciated feature of most modern cars today is that we can turn off all of the lane keep, all the safety stuff, just hard buttons down here. Yeah, that's very nice. I just want hard buttons. I leave most of it on, but I want hard buttons to be able to turn it off easily and not buried through the infotainment. The rear seats are pretty roomy as well. They can go forward, back, lean back a bit. It's very nice. It is very nice. And then the back row behind that, the third row, is quite cramped for someone of my stature at six foot one and a half. Yeah, if you're five foot eight and you gotta get in that Uber with all your friends, you'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, and we also have peasant blockers. Yeah, okay, so peasant blockers are not called peasant blockers in cars like this. They are called baby shades. Baby shade peasant blockers. <laughs> no peasants looking at my baby. <laughs> Which the Atlas also did have. So now let's get into the price. $52,490 plus the optional $300 white paint. Canadian. For a safe family car, kind of seems like not the worst price. Yeah, I think this thing drives really well. I really like it. I'm not in love with the looks, but I don't mind the looks at all. I think it looks fairly rugged for this class. Not as manly looking as the Atlas, but I, I don't mind this at all. This or the Honda Odyssey? I think I kind of like the Odyssey. <laughs> I think the Odyssey is more ironic because it's like a minivan. Exactly. But it's got more room. It's just funnier. It is funnier. But now this or an Atlas? I think I'm gonna go with this. I would go with this because it's got the rewinding satellite radio. It's got the tune mix thing, which I think is very cool. They have equivalent amounts of gloss black, so I can't really give a winner on that. Did the Atlas have lane keep? Yeah, it had a bunch of safety stuff like that, but this works way better. Okay, so then this? This feels faster as well. That did have the VR6, but this one feels faster. Plus it has VTEC and yeah, it sounds kind of better. All right, so I guess we're both on the same page that we would take this over an Atlas. Yeah, and I think these seats are more comfortable. I just, I yeah, am definitely yeah. on team pilot. I fully agree. So let us know in the comments below what big SUV is your favorite. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes and join our YouTube membership to get some cool flair next to your name. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. <laughs>